the overall vision from Marvelocity is we want to, you know, cover Alex's entire Marvel career from being a kid up to now. Uh, we want to try and show work that hasn't been published before. And, you know, we want to bring people who may not be familiar with it into it. And I think we did that with mythology. People who were not previously aware of him or what he did became aware because of, of that book. And I think it's definitely a goal with Marvelocity as well. Every part of comics and artwork is a form of communication with other people. It's not just a, here, let me direct my thoughts at you as a dictation of concept, but it's hoping to convince you of how cool you think a visual could be or a story could be. And you're trying to communicate ideas and whatever. So every part of even a project like this that is in one part storytelling and greater part just graphic impact, you're hoping to relate a sense of energy, urgency, and enthusiasm to people. That there's a lightning of spirit that comes out of superheroes that has always worked for me. That it isn't really about the practicality of what they might do about, it's not the practicality about grown men punching each other in costumes. It really isn't about that. It's a visual metaphor. And that metaphor could be for a lot of things, but it's mostly just about the energy and enthusiasm that can be found in the fun of life. It's comic book archaeology, and it's and uh, Alex, in a way, is kind of like me in that he saves everything. So there's everything to you know like sift through, and then he's creating a bunch of new art for this as well, which is really exciting. The jacket is going to be this panorama of portraits of um, seven of the characters on one side. and The book needs to be a cross-section of everything I've done to a representative degree. So in addition to getting a lot of things that people haven't seen before, you want to represent fully like the projects, the pieces that are kind of key, so that they all make somewhat of an appearance, if not taking up the greater real estate of the book, I still need to acknowledge projects that took years of my life that I contributed design to, conceptual direction to, because there's a lot of miniseries that I had kind of the formative direction of. I was both art director and co-creator of the content. So there's a lot of that that we need to get in there and show like, if you had like one Alex Ross primer of his work for this publisher, this is it. Some of the new things that we're including involve pieces that we haven't even printed yet for not just covers, but also um, prints that I make with my uh, print license with Marvel. And uh, I've been doing any a number of different portraiture of the various Marvel characters, as well as very expansive scenes that there's really no place for them to go in Marvel's publishing because they don't fit a a cover format and they're not specifically storytelling but like say I just did a piece with Thor that I completed a couple of weeks ago that's a whole view of Asgard and all of his supporting characters both villains and heroes and you're seeing the city of Asgard in the far distance and the head of Odin and Loki and all these elements arrayed together. I mean Alex's work excites me on many different levels uh, that one person can be so incredibly talented and to see that in action is amazing. And then it's it's all these characters the way you you really wanted to see them as a kid and, and in the way that, that the movies still don't get right. Um, but he he does. And and that's it's gonna be a perfect example with this book. Like yesterday we shot this bus that he had done of the Green Goblin. And it's exactly the way, you know, Ditko's Green Goblin would look in three dimensions as a real being. And uh, that's exciting to me. And I, and I don't understand why they don't go for that in the movies. And I'm not in the movie business, and I don't know the movie business. Uh, but in a way, I'm glad because then he can do it and then we can 
put it in the book. There's a similarity I've kept up in my workload of, of viewing the Marvel characters, maybe some of the way that I saw them when I was younger, but it's evolved ever so lightly. I've tried to pick up on things that they might be doing in movies to understand a different way of seeing things, or to re-examine the way that I've interpreted something over time, whether it's the way I might draw a face or a costume. Uh, I'm trying to draw the Spider-Man costume different than the way, maybe the way I did 25 years ago and learn new details, new ways of illustration that could kind of enhance certain things. The book is my passion project of the moment and will be coming out in fall of 2018.